Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining with us again tonight for our teach time. We're continuing on our last day on the Spirit-filled church and some of the important principles of a Spirit-filled church. Uh, today I want to speak to you about a Spirit-filled church is a loving church. Amen. The Bible says, and we're still looking at Acts chapter 2, verses 42, it says, they devoted themselves also to fellowship. Amen. So we understand that part of a culture of a, a spiritful church is that it has a strong culture of fellowship. And uh, we spoke about this as being a loving church. I think one of the very important and um, characteristics of any local church should be is that we have a culture of love. It's built on an understanding that Christ loved us. Built on an understanding that it is not this brotherly love, paleo love, but it is the agape love. This is the God kind of love. It's not conditional. It's not dependent on circumstances. It's not dependent on people. It is a God kind of love. I, I always say to the Potter's House family, I said, if anything, we must be known as a church that loves. That means we would err on the side of loving too much. That means we, we understand this, that um, sometimes when you build on a culture like this, like a culture of love, it allows you to be vulnerable and transparent. Uh, sometimes people may misconstrue that the, the culture of, of, of the house, but we should not stop loving. So the, the, the aspect of it is that we need to build a strong culture within the house. Now, the Greek word for fellowship is koinonia, which basically means uh, having something in common with each other. So the Bible says in Acts chapter 2, verse 42, it says they gathered together and they had fellowship. Now fellowship means there is a coming together, there is a sharing. Now when we look at Acts chapter 2 verse 42 it says they even went to the place where they supported each other. Those that had, some of them sold property in order to support each other. And now when I looked at this whole aspect of fellowship, I believe sometimes lacks, but it is a very key element. People, many people that are part of the local church long for fellowship. We know during the lockdown and, past, and the past eight or nine Sundays, we weren't able to meet. We weren't able to meet for Passover. We weren't able to meet for Ascension Day, even Pentecost, you know, Sunday. We weren't able to meet and most of these gatherings, I, uh, our church commonly on Easter would use one of the days as a day of fellowship. And that day is a day where we would sit together, share in a meal, interact with each other. Often we would have family days. Just It will be a, a day where we get to know each other more than just fellowshipping at church, but get to know each other in a deeper le level. And we found some very meaningful relationships and friendships have, uh, have built up from that. So fellowship is a very important part. Many of our churches and many of your churches included, uh, when we fellowship, there's always a fellowship around a meal. So we find in Acts chapter 2 that when they fellowship together, the Bible says they took care of each other's needs. I believe that in the, in the past, a lot of our outreach programs, a lot of our feeding programs, a lot of our generosity programs, our hamper drives, were really focused on external. Because in most cases, people within our local congregations were taken care of. But I believe it's coming more and more in the days to come that we have to start within the house. Like Jesus says, in Jerusalem, be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and uttermost parts of the earth. A lot of our support programs, a lot of our feeding programs, a lot of our 
uh, our, our benevolent programs will have to start within our local churches. And I want to encourage us, let's build a strong culture of fellowship. Where if we see people that have a need, we are able to address it. Now, a strong culture of fellowship is built, firstly, where, uh, depending on our vertical fellowship with, with God the Father. If you have a strong vertical fellowship with the Heavenly Father, it is easy to care for each other. Right? That means as part of the church experience is the matter of fellowship. I've heard people in the past say, oh, I just came just for church. I came just to uh, meet with God and, and I, don't, I don't feel the need to interact with each other. Now, some people do it as a result of some hurt, some pain that they've gone through. But I want you to understand, let's build a strong culture of fellowship. That means that your church family, the Bible says, when God refers to the church, he says he is the God of the families both in heaven and on earth. That means God, when he looks at the church, he looks at it as a family. And a family that is built on strong culture of fellowship. So I want you to understand, let us build a strong fellowship with God the Father. So we would have a strong fellowship with our brothers and our sisters alongside us. And I believe that the, uh, the Bible says in verses 44 and 45, all the believers were together having everything in common, selling their possessions and goods and gave everyone as they needed. Now, we're not talking about you going to sell everything, and, but they were saying those that had the means to be able to be a benefit to somebody else, did it. Amen? And this is what is important, even within our local churches, for those of us that have the means, let us support each other, support our brothers and our sisters, and we have an opportunity to minister in-house. Amen? So I want to continue, because this whole culture of fellowship is important. It was also based on the principles that came out of Deuteronomy chapter 26, verses 12 where the Bible says that the Israelites would give a tenth of their, their produce and, and, and that tenth will be divided amongst the Levites, the, the alien, the fatherless, and the widow. That means a spirit-filled church has a culture of giving, a culture of taking care of the poor, a culture of taking care of those that do not have. That means we should believe that as a local church, we should not have people that have, have needs within our local church. That means we should be able to minister to the needs of people, not the wants, not the greed, but to the needs of people, amen? And this is a very important part. The Bible speaks about, uh, in the book of, uh, of 1 John, Chapter 1, verse 3, it speaks about that we that which we've seen, that which we've heard, that which we've handled, we share with you. And so the reality is that uh, taking care of each other within the body of Christ is not something new. It has been something that has been practiced over the generations of, of church and gatherings. And this is nothing new. Uh, I, I know one thing that as we minister to each other, we minister unto our God. Amen. And so I pray that we would have a strong culture of fellowship. Do not, I, I encourage you, even within your local church, develop relationships with people, meaningful relationships, not just as we are fellow members within a local church or we fellowship together, but also get to know your brothers and sisters. You'll be amazed that sometimes the encouragement they can be to you and you can be to them. The last point in terms of uh, the spiritual church, it is a witnessing church. Amen. In Acts chapter 2 verses 47 and it says that the Lord added to their number daily those that were being saved. So the, the Bible doesn't say whether they went out witnessing. 
but as a result of their faithfulness, as a result of their culture. Now, whenever a group of people demonstrate the love of God, the grace of God, others will take notice. Others will ask questions. I've seen this many, many, many times. When, you, when, when people fellowship together, other people ask, you know, because if you have family and your family asks, oh, we're going, going out, uh, would you want to come? And you say, no, our church has a program and this is what's happening. And, and they hear that about the excitement. They will want to know, what is this about? And this is what happens. Because when you begin to, when people begin a fellowship, when people see growth, when people develop, witnessing becomes an automatic response. Amen? That means we know that God can reach people supernaturally. Amen? When the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost, those who received the Spirit immediately began to speak about Jesus. And the more you speak about Jesus, I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you when you experience and you encounter God, be willing to share with others what God is doing. Amen? Don't just keep it to yourself. I want you to understand the Bible says, and the Lord was adding to their number daily those who were being saved. Now, this wasn't a migration of Christians from one place to another. This was new people that were giving their hearts to the Lord because they were hearing of the good work that God was doing. Whenever there are, there are those that bear godly examples of the kingdom of God, People are attracted to it. Now, witnessing is a very key, important part of a spiritual church. That means we should be able to share of the goodness of God. I pray that more and more in the future, people would share their encounters with God. They would share what God is speaking to them, what God is revealing to them by the voice of the Holy Spirit. Even they can share their experience, their own testimonies. That, I believe, is going to be a key uh, method of witnessing. Because if God can do it for them, he can do it for you also. Amen? Now, the Bible says, and the Lord added to the church daily. Now, contrary to common understanding within church circles, we believe that more our evangelism and outreach programs, it will grow the church. I believe it is when we are witnessing of the Lord Jesus Christ and following the example that he requires of us, he will act. We cannot do anything out of our own to increase numbers within the church. We can, we, when we apply the principles of the word, the Lord will allow growth and development to take place. And the Bible says, and the Lord added to the church daily. When God adds, the church will become stronger and stronger and stronger. So let's be a witnessing church. Let's be a church that speaks. Let us be a loving church. Let us be a discipling church. This is important. Part of a witnessing church is a discipling church. That means when people get saved, they, 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 they are, we walk alongside them till they reach maturity and they are able to share the same goodness of God with somebody else. That's when you become a disciple. Amen. So we want to mature believers so that they can become disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us bow our heads together as we pray. Father, we thank you. Help us to become a church, a house of God that loves each other, that is built on this agape love of God. That we pray also help us to be witnesses you said, O oh God, when the Spirit of God will come upon us, we will be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the outermost parts of the earth. That Father teach us our, to be a witness in our Jerusalem. That means in our family. Our Judea. That means the, the people that we come in contact with. Uh, our Samaria, O oh God, in our, in our city and in our nation. And the outermost parts of the earth. Father, I pray for those Give us a missionary mindset. Give us a godly mindset to show the plans of God. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen.
and amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining with us again today in Jesus' name. Amen.